Good morning. Welcome to St. Helena Catholic Church for the celebration of the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. It is a joy to worship with you today. In order to preserve the sacredness of this Eucharistic celebration, we ask that all phones be silenced and out of reverence, please refrain from chewing gum and texting during Mass. As Catholics, we fully participate in the celebration of the Eucharist when we receive Holy Communion. We are encouraged to receive communion devoutly and frequently. In order to be properly prepared to receive communion, Catholic participants should not be conscious of grave sin and should have fasted for one hour. A person who is conscious of grave sin is not to receive the body and blood of the Lord without prior sacramental confession. If you are not of our faith or outside the church, please come forward to receive a blessing. The readings for today are found in the Journeys Songbooks, number 1009A. Please stand and join in singing our gathering hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you to St. Helena Catholic Church today as we gather on this beautiful Sunday morning, the day that our Lord Jesus triumphed over sin and death. As we come now, into the Lord's holy presence. Let us prepare to give him thanks as we call to mind our sin and humbly beg his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times, go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. And if we have any children here today who are ready for Children's Church, if you come forward. Good, kids. Oh, well, kids, let's, let's say a little prayer before you go, okay? Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, we give you thanks for these young children, these precious souls whom you have created in your image. We thank you, Jesus, for entrusting their care to their parents and to our church. And we ask you, Spirit of God, to lead and guide and direct them as they go forth today to study God's holy word. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> On this mountain, the Lord of hosts <clears throat> excuse me, will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. <clears throat> the reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. <clears throat> On that day it will be said, Behold our God to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his form, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to the servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there, not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. The gospel parable that we've heard this morning is a very familiar one. A story of a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. Unfortunately, 
The first group of guests who were invited, those who were on the A-list, so to speak, simply refused to come. They did not accept the king's invitation. Needless to say, the king was very disappointed by the indifference of those first invited guests, but he was so intent on filling up the banquet hall for his son's wedding that he sent out a second round of invitations, and this time all of the social niceties and conventions went out the door. Some of them who were invited roughed up the king's messengers. Some of them they even killed. This time the king was enraged and he felt he dealt very harshly with those who treated his messengers in that way. And yet because he was intent on filling up the banquet hall, the king sent out yet a third round of invitations. At this time, the banquet hall was filled with guests. Now, to the early Christian community, the meaning of this parable was crystal clear. The first people who were invited to enter into a covenant with God were the children of Israel. God sent messengers to his people, the prophets of the old covenant, in order to prepare them for the bridegroom's coming. And yet many in Israel did not heed God's invitation. They rejected the prophets. Some of them they even killed. And yet still the Lord did not give up on his people. And in a supreme act of humility, the Lord God sent the bridegroom himself. He sent his own son to announce the good news of salvation. And yet the world did not accept him. Sinful men rejected and even crucified God's son. But even then, God did not give up on mankind. In fact, God raised his son from the dead. And when our Lord Jesus ascended into heaven, he asked the heavenly father to send the Holy Spirit into the world. The Spirit of God descended upon the apostles and through their powerful preaching and through the many signs that they worked. Many responded and said yes to God. This time, Jew and Gentile alike, even tax collectors and sinners repented and all the nations of the earth poured into God's church. And my friends, this is how we got here today. Now, if this is the fundamental meaning of the parable for the early church, our Lord adds, as he always does, a surprising twist to the story. It's one that makes this parable a very pointed one for us. When the king arrives in the banquet hall and he sees all these guests, he spies one man who is not appropriately dressed for the feast, the king grows very angry when he sees this, and he tells his servants to cast that man into the outer darkness where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. For as he says, while many are called, few are chosen. Those are very sobering words, aren't they? Words that make us ponder our own response to the Lord God. And so the question for those of us who are here today is, have we said yes with all our hearts to God's offer of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ? And are we clothed, are we appropriately dressed with God's transforming and sanctifying grace? Long ago, St. Augustine said the appropriate dress for the heavenly wedding feast is a threefold wedding garment, a pure heart, a clear conscience, and a genuine faith. I'll repeat that. What constitutes the appropriate garment for those who have been invited by God to enter into his heavenly wedding feast is a pure heart, a clear conscience, and a genuine faith. You see, if you have those three things, you have everything because it means that you are at peace with God. 
and in mess and the message indeed the good news of today's gospel is that God himself provides the wedding garment to those who are to share communion with him through Jesus Christ God has redeemed us he has forgiven our sins but he still awaits our yes, our acceptance of his grace. You know, last Sunday in my homily, I spoke about Our Lady's visit to the three young children of Fatima in the year 1917. The Blessed Mother appeared to the three young children of Fatima a total of six times between May and October of that year. And in the course of those apparitions, she confided three messages or prophecies to the children, all of which help us to understand what it means to really accept God's offer of grace. The first message, ironically, was a vision of hell. That's how Our Lady began. This was surprising because when the Blessed Mother gave that vision to the children, they were very, very young, just seven, nine, and 10 years old. We just blessed those precious little boys and girls that stood before us. We wouldn't think that at that point in their lives, in that state of innocence, they're ready for an experience like that, a vision of hell. At Fatima, the eldest of the three children, Lucia later wrote, we would have died of fright at seeing the great number of souls falling into the fires of hell, had not Our Lady already assured us that one day we would be with her in heaven. You see, through the children, Our Lady wanted to remind the world that we should never take God's offer of salvation through Jesus Christ for granted. God's grace is free, but it is not cheap. The Blessed Mother was telling us that if we refuse to repent of our sins, if we say no to God's offer of grace, then we will spend a terrible and tormented eternity apart from him. You know, our Lord has given the experience or the vision of hell to many of the saints, some in a very intense way, one of those was St. Faustina, the Apostle of Divine Mercy, who died in 1938, just before the Second World War. One day, the Lord gave her the experience of what hell was like, and later on in her diary, she wrote about the seven torments of hell. But at the end, she has something very interesting to say. She says, one thing I notice is that most of the souls in hell did not believe in hell during their lives on earth. Jesus came to save us from hell. Sometimes practicing Catholics have said to me, and quite, in fact, quite often, Father, you don't really believe in hell. God would never send anyone to hell. My response is twofold. First of all, God doesn't send anyone to hell. Those who go there choose to live apart from God eternally. And the second thing is, I wouldn't be a priest if I didn't believe in hell. Jesus came to save us from hell. And that is what a priest is to do, is to carry on the ministry of Jesus Christ. The second message, as I said last Sunday, was a prophecy about the great lie the deception of atheistic socialism or Marxism emanating, first of all, from Russia, which was about to undergo a violent communist revolution in the year 1917. In fact, it was less than two weeks after Our Lady appeared to the children in October, on October 13, 1917, within 12 days the communists launched their revolution in Russia and they set about the work of eradicating Christian faith. Russia was a Christian nation at that time. 
And they began to impose this philosophy, the belief system of Marxism, which sees man only as a material being, only as a being destined for this world, a being without a soul. In other words, man is his own creation. He can be whatever he wants to be. We see this crazy belief system today spreading. Because we create ourselves. God did not create us. In his rebellious pride, fallen man, just like Satan himself, says, non serviam, I will not serve the Lord. Our Lady warned that if mankind did not reject this lie, a second world war would erupt more terrible than the first, and of course that's exactly what happened when two antichrists, Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler, rose up to power in the 1930s, and they wrought death and destruction on a scale never seen before in the history of the world. At the present time, we're witnessing a tidal wave of atheistic Marxism in our world a resurgence of this belief system. And as man turns away from God, we also see an increase in hatred, violence, and war. Witness the war in Russia and the Ukraine. And war once again in the Middle East, which is such a powder keg. We see terrible atrocities occurring there. These are wars that threaten to engulf the whole world. And we see signs of war in the Far East too, as China becomes more aggressive. The third message which is unfolding even as we speak has to do with a great apostasy against the faith and a global persecution against those who believe in Jesus Christ and who strive to follow him and to proclaim his gospel we see this in our own cultures, our secular cultures, rabid rejection of the church's teaching on the meaning of marriage, the family, human sexuality, and the sanctity of human life. Those who uphold this are accused of hate speech, of being hateful people. And more dangerous than the enemies without, though, are those who deny the truths of the faith within the church. And tragically, we see many bishops of the church who are on the road to perdition themselves who are leading many of the faithful astray. This is the most frightening thing of all. These are the things that Our Lady warned about at Fatima more than a century ago. The old saying goes, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Through the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, God has invited us to say yes to him. Will we accept God's invitation to grace? Let's pray together the Fatima prayer which Our Lady gave us. Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Amen. Amen. I invite you to rise now and together let us make our profession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. He arose from the dead on the third day. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence and trust in the Father's love, let us offer our needs to him in prayer. O 
For the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Michael, all our clergy and religious, and for the intentions of all of us present today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the holy souls in purgatory, heaven's hospital, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to abortion and all sins against the dignity of human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish will truly live as God's holy people, producing spiritual fruit to his glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many young people will respond to Christ's call to follow him in the consecrated life and in the priesthood, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to live with greater readiness for the wedding feast of the Lamb, the life of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom this Mass is being offered, for the sick and for those who have died, especially our beloved pastor, Father Mark Beard, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord Jesus, we praise you for the blessings of our faith, and we ask you, Spirit of God, to give us the gift of peace and joy in your presence. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times go. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful people with these sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord. Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summon before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
from the Father. Ancestors ate manna in the desert, but this is the bread come down from heaven.
We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and that of his Holy Mother, I demand and command that any evil spirits, hexes, vexes, triggers, trances, vows, or demonic blessings among those who have gathered, their loved ones and their possessions, through the authority of Holy Mother Church and the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I bind them separately and individually and break all seals. They're bound and the seals are broken. They're done so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Totally yours, Immaculate Conception, Mary, our Mother. Live in me, act in me, speak in me and through me. Think your thoughts in my mind, love through my heart. Give me your dispositions and feelings. Teach me, lead me, and guide me to Jesus. Correct, enlighten, and expand my thoughts and behavior. Possess my soul. Take over my entire personality and life. Replace it with yourself. Incline me to constant adoration. Pray in me and through me. Let me live in you and keep me in this union always. Amen. 
I thank all of you for being at Mass and for praying so reverently today. I hope you have a beautiful Sunday. This week, by the way, I'm going to make a short pilgrimage Tuesday through Friday uh, with a group of couples from Baton Rouge. We'll be going to the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, not in Mexico, but there's another shrine by that name in Wisconsin. Um, and it was founded by Cardinal uh, Burke, Cardinal Raymond Burke, who's a very good bishop and teacher of the faith. So I'll be praying for all of you. I hope you pray for me too. During those days, we will have our regular mass schedule because Father Roberto Merced, the provincial of the Dominicans, and who's a very good friend of our parish, will be here to celebrate mass on those days. I'll be back for the weekend masses. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.